Yeah, it's funny because as somebody who didn't think Trump could actually get elected, I, I was almost close to making a video right before election day where I was going to say the Trump people were in a sort of privileged position in that because their candidate wasn't going to get elected, they would never have to sort of be accountable for their endorsement, right? And, and for that reason, the people like Devin Tracy and Reese over at the Nightmare Fuel podcast those small handful of cats in this community who are supporting Hillary, they would be the ones that would have to deal with all the, you know, anytime something went wrong, people would be shitting on them and being like, this is your fault because you didn't, right? Because you didn't weren't a Trump guy and if Trump was here, it would have been different. That's kind of what I expected we were going to have for the next four years. Hello, I'm American, and uh, I understand that at the moment that label may carry some shame because recently we made one of the worst decisions in the history of the world. We decided to put an incompetent buffoon who has never held elected office in the most powerful position in our country and quite possibly the world. If you think that's bad, take a look at the millions of dipshits who celebrate this daily. Now, recently, Donald Trump released an update on the transition process of his administration going into the White House and updated people on what would be happening within the first 100 days of him being in office. So I thought we could watch that and maybe offer some comments on the ridiculous proposals he has for our country. Today, I would like to provide the American people with an update on the White House transition and our policy plans for the first 100 days. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government. <laughs> patriots indeed. Have you looked at who's on your cabinet? These are the dregs of society. He made this big deal about draining the swamp. You didn't drain the swamp one bit. You took a magic wand and you mixed up the swamp a little bit. Anyone who brown knows hard enough ended up on your cabinet. And by the way, hearing that these people are working hard, people like Rudy Giuliani and Jeff Sessions, that should concern you. Working hard, yes, working hard to fuck over this country. Finish the sentence. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government, helping us to make America great again. <laughs> My agenda will be... He still, he still can't let the slogan die. He still wants to sell people on that. We're going to make America great again. What the fuck does that even mean? Great? When? What time period are you trying to drag us back to? In what way? First off, you need to define what exactly is making America not great and tell us when it was great. It's truly a fascinating social experiment that people fell for this. This is a ripoff of Ronald Reagan's slogan, Make America Great. And because those people are so in love with Reagan, Donald Trump does it again, make America great again. And they're like, woo, yeah, meaningless platitudes, yay. This is the most easily led group of people I think I've ever seen. If, if sheeple was ever applicable, it is to this group. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Okay, so... Just so we understand Trump talk here, putting America first is code for putting America only. Yes, of course, we should look after our own country above all others, especially if we're Americans and you're the American president. But we're going to get into some of the policies he wants to enact, some of the agreements that he wants to break apart. We are isolating America from the rest of the world, and this will not turn out in our favor. Global issues affect us too, Trump. We're not going to be able to turn our backs on everyone for long. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland. 
America. And see, like, that's a good message. See, that's the part I can get behind. I just wish that it wasn't surrounded with all this other bullshit. I also have no idea how innovative America is going to be under Donald Trump. Probably not very. Creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. <laughs> restore our laws? What? What fucking laws? Trump talks about this all the time. We need to restore law and order. What the fuck are you even talking about? He acts like we're living in some dystopian anarchist society. Oh, God, can you imagine that council of evil all gathered at the desk planning the executive actions to be taken on day one? That's a scary thought. You cannot sleep well at night after hearing that. These include the following. On trade, I am going to issue our notification of intent to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. <laughs> A potential disaster. I like how he says that. Like, look, it's not a disaster right now. In fact, it's actually working to lower tariffs and all that shit. It helps trade between all these countries. It strengthens alliances. But it's a potential disaster. In what way? Everything's just, it's a disaster. It's a disaster to me. The TPP, it's a disaster. All these people, like, this is horseshoe theory in effect. So you have the Trump retards, and then you have the Bernie or Buzz people, all anti-TPP. This is the isolationism in play. This is us separating ourselves from our allies and the rest of the world. By withdrawing from the TPP, the price to import products and goods from other countries will rise significantly. And you might be thinking, well, why would someone want to do that? Why would someone want to make it so we can't import goods from other countries? That's the catcher, because he doesn't want to do that, because he does want to isolate America. He even said it. He laid it out beforehand. We want to make everything here. We want to be innovative here. We want to just be codependent on ourselves. We talk a lot about the disastrous effects his administration will have on the United States. Imagine the rest of the world. Imagine a world with an isolated America. Imagine how much that is going to fuck over every single other country. The fate of the world was held in the balance by ignorant, hick American voters. That is how precarious our world really is. And that should terrify everyone. We left the fate of the world in the hands of the least qualified, most stupid demographic of people possible. Instead, we will negotiate fair bilateral trade deals that bring jobs and industry back onto American shores. And there's no mention of how it's unfair. This is the mentality. It's not like reform things within the TPP. It's just, just scrap that entirely. Let's screw over the world first while we sort this out. Because apparently the thing that's most precious to us is bringing jobs back to America. Something that you cannot even guarantee. And here's the full context. If Donald Trump can somehow maintain the relations between those countries and bring American jobs back then I'm all for that. Unfortunately, I just don't think that's quite possible at the moment. We don't need to burn this many bridges to get back our coveted fucking jobs. On energy, I will cancel job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale energy and clean coal, creating many millions of high-paying jobs. That's what we want. That's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> I was looking at a couple sources that were talking about this because people zoomed in on him saying clean coal. They were like, what, what, what are you talking about? They're, you have to assume that he's talking about hypothetical restrictions against cleaning coal, which don't exist. I've also looked at how the numbers break down here. And yeah, there's not, there's not millions of jobs to be created here. There are less than a million people working in that industry. It's hundreds of thousands of people, not millions. You're not just going to suddenly create millions of jobs out of nowhere by, by what? This is another conservative boogeyman. Restrictions. Oh, they're preventing us from having millions of jobs. Those restrictions are in place for a very good reason when it comes to energy. 
you're most likely referring to restrictions from the EPA, which is something that you want to do away with because, of course, you believe that climate change is a Chinese hoax. Restrictions are a good thing for society, and we're about to get to his further demonization of restrictions. This is dangerous. This is a dangerous game we're playing here. Let's just do away with all those restrictions. We have someone in charge of our country who does not acknowledge the greatest crisis facing the world right now. It should be a given that you accept the scientific consensus on climate change. And why do Republicans oppose this? Well, probably because they are funded by giant coal and gas companies. They want to deny that climate change exists because then they can do away with the restrictions and make a greater profit. And also tap into some primal, juvenile idea of American innovation, and you're, you're really stifling us. Yes, things are being stifled in the name of protecting the world and the environment. Is that fucking so bad? Maybe we can put your profits on hold for a bit, Mr. Evil, while we fix the world. While we prevent massive droughts and starvation and a refugee crisis, all that. But no, apparently your bank account is more important to you. Great. I love knowing where your priorities are at, bro. On regulation, I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. <laughs> So important. I like how willy-nilly that is. Okay, if we introduce a new regulation, what do we have to do when we do that? We need to do away with two old ones. It doesn't matter which one. I mean, they're, they're just regulations. Goodbye. These are the decrees of a clown. I don't think I've ever heard something that retarded, honestly. Let's just deregulate society. Let's do it like last time. Let's deregulate the banks so that they can play around with all our money, and then we, oops, we're in debt. Do we really want a repeat of that? And knowing Trump, what are these regulations going to be? They're going to be the regulations that protect the environment, of course. I mean, profits and innovation, right? Uh, fuck the environment. Who cares about that shit? On national security, I will ask the Department of Defense and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to develop a comprehensive plan to protect America's vital infrastructure from cyber attacks and all other form of attacks. How bizarre. Is this some strange reference to the Russian espionage during the election? Cyber attacks. How oddly specific. Especially that it has come to light that the Russian government was working very closely with your campaign. And, and, and protect us from attacks? Like, I think they're already doing that, man. I think we've been doing that since America was a country. Protect us from attacks. Protect us from attacks? From fucking who? I guess that information just wasn't in the teleprompter. On immigration, I will direct the Department of Labor to investigate all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. Okay, and that's very interesting. He's gone back on a lot of his promises, but it appears that he is going to keep his promise to throw out all the undocumented immigrants. And I can understand both sides of this. I can understand upholding law and order. I also understand that we need to take into consideration the children of said undocumented immigrants. And maybe possibly those people should be treated as asylum seekers if they are fleeing a terrible situation. A lot of people will come up through Mexico from other Central and South American countries. Some that are in huge disarray. Huge disarray. I personally think it would be smarter to offer them the chance to become legal immigrants. But Donald Trump doesn't think that. Donald Trump has made it very clear that he thinks that the majority of people who cross that border are terrible people, they're rapists and all that. And I mean, you've heard it, you've seen it in the news. And that's just such simplistic bullshit. The world is far too complex for this orange joke to function in it, especially lead it. On ethics reform, as part of our plan to drain the swamp, we will impose a five-year ban on executive officials becoming lobbyists after they leave the administration, and a lifetime ban on executive officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's just a really weird proposal. If you're this anti-lobbying, do what I would prefer, and just get rid of lobbying in general. Yeah, that, that will really get rid of the corruption in Congress, I'm sure. 
and drain the swamp, you don't even remotely do that. Who's in your cabinet? Oh yeah, the same people who have been in government for decades. This is another meaningless platitude that the Trumpers have really picked up. And this is what attracted a lot of the Bernie or Bus people to Trump. Oh look, he said he's ending corruption in government, even though he's not. He's really just continuing it under the guise of getting rid of it. But sure, if you think that lobbying is like the biggest issue that we need to focus on right now, sure. These are just a few of the steps we will take to reform Washington and rebuild our middle class. I will provide more updates in the coming days as we work together to make America great again for everyone. And I mean everyone. <laughs> What a joke. Rebuild the middle class. Um, maybe not implementing trickle-down economics will help rebuild the middle class. We were on the road to rebuilding the middle class. Under you, we're fucked. I'm part of that middle class. I'm shaking in my boots over what you're going to do next. Why do they even bother with releasing this? This is one of the most substanceless videos I've ever seen. He did not get into specifics on any of those topics. Your stance on the undocumented workers is alarming. There's a much smarter way to go about solving that problem. And we won't get to that while you're in charge and your cronies are in charge. Withdrawing from the TPP, this is a joke. If we put in one new regulation, we must get rid of two old ones. Doesn't matter which, just get rid of them. We don't need them anymore. Do you have any idea the effects you are going to have on American society? For all the Americans watching, understand, this is our leader. This is the guy who we thought it would be just a dandy idea to put in charge. This guy who doesn't know jack shit about anything. This guy who approaches every problem in the world like a fucking toddler. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to look up and say, yep, that's the guy who's in charge. It feels like nothing is really certain now. Anything could happen. He could come out and be like, hey, you know, this was all a joke, guys. I was just trolling. -la 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 -la. And is that how you really want to live? Do you want to live in a world where you're like, is my president just fucking with me right now? I certainly don't. I was content broadening my focus and focusing on more advanced problems in the world. But it looks like for four years, we're going to have to bring it back home and we are going to have to worry about the most simplistic shit, things that should be givens. Like, yes, is my health care covered? Will we maintain strong relationships with all our allies? Those things are in debate now. Ah, uh, cheers, America. The Orange Emperor has spoken. Go and subscribe to Reese at the Nightmare Fuel Podcast. Do it.